Hey friends, Kevin here, and there's something I want to talk about today, which I think is going to be important to you guys and gals just starting out. And those of you watching with a little more experience, I think you'll be able to chime in to the comments section once you see what I'm talking about, and you'll be able to help some of these people just getting their feet wet also. So let's get to it. So what is this big secret, this big revelation? Well, here it is. Your first van build is not going to be perfect. Maybe that's not the real revelation, but here's what the revelation should be. You need to accept that your first van build is not going to be perfect. Because I meet people on the road, I see people and discuss things in forums, sometimes on the internet, and people are just massively stressing out over this, thinking that everything has to be absolutely right and everything has to be absolutely perfect in what they've done and every decision they've made. And often they're stressing out at this stuff to the point they haven't even been anywhere yet. They're just starting out on this. They, their van is still sit, sitting in their yard and they haven't even used it yet. But let me tell you, when you get out those first few times, even if you're going to something like your local state parks to get your feet wet, you're going to find out again that whatever choices you made with your van build aren't going to be perfect. And when you get out on the road, adventuring a little bit further out, you'll find out what you thought was right those first few days that you spent maybe in a state park. When you're in day 17 out on the road, again, you're going to find out that some of the choices you made weren't the right ones for you. So the important thing is to not completely stress out over this stuff because it's just the way it is. And all of us, myself included, get caught up sometimes in watching what other people have done. And I enjoy watching other people's build videos too, and I pick up a good idea every once in a while. But at the same time, I see some of these videos and these people are, are just in their third day of doing this or they haven't even left their driveway yet. And I'm sitting there looking at this going, man, that ain't going to work. Not out in the real world. But they'll figure that out, and that's okay. The same way that I figured it out, it's okay. And I still make mistakes also. I just came back again from a roughly 40, 41 day, whatever it was, day and night trip out. I'm back here for a week or two, and then hopefully I'll be out again on my next, next adventure. But... 30 days into this thing, I was looking around my van and a couple of things I had brought and I'm going, you idiot, you haven't used that yet. Why did you bring that? Or why did you do that a certain way? It's normal and you need to accept that's going to happen. Now, in the beginning of me doing this four years ago, whatever, some of that stuff drove me nuts and I let it aggravate me a little more than I should have. Now I just kind of let it roll off and I change whatever it is or move something around to make it work better and just go go with it and I don't stress out to the level that, that I did in the beginning. And let me give you a better example of this. Now, you know I've used many vans in these travels and I have this Class B van that I use sometimes also that was professionally designed, professionally converted. And while I like the road trek, and a lot of people like the road trek, and other brands, Pleasure Way, and different brands that have been done over the years on these van chassis, anyone that has one, if they're honest with you, is going to tell you that they're not perfect either. Now, again, when you walk into one of these sitting on a lot somewhere, and it's completely empty, and it looks like you have this massive amount of space, as you saw in this other video I did, that space gets filled up pretty quickly, especially if you're out for a decent period of time, because probably half the stuff I have in that van has to do with food or cooking. So a lot of space gets devoted to that, and you're going to have a lot of space in your thing devoted to that once you start doing more than, say, the occasional weekend. And that's okay. That's just part of it. 
but as well as that thing is designed, professionally designed, and mine is older. Mine is a 1993 model, which means it's whatever, 28 years old, roughly. That thing was close to $50,000 when it was new. A new comparable version right now is about $130,000. And while they're well made and having the cabinets there and the bathroom doors that swing open different ways and give you a little privacy if there's more than one person in there, all of those things are great, but there's still some things that just necess may not be right for you in them. And it's the same thing when you're looking at van bills or you're doing your own van bill. What seems like it's going to make sense at first, in reality, may not work out so well. Now, with this big professional van, one of the things that doesn't work for me, and I'm sure works with other people, is that bed slash dining room table. And I see people do this in their own custom builds. And if it works for them and they're happy with it, that's fine. But I do not want to make my bed up, take it apart, which is what you essentially are doing to turn it into a little dining room table because then you have to, of course, have space to store the blankets and the pillows and all of those things have to go somewhere. And then when I'm ready and I'm at the end of the day, I don't want to tear that down and lift the table and hide the pole and put that back down and move the cushions around to turn it back into a bed and make the bed up again and drag out all the cushions and pillows. That's just me. So on these trips after the first couple of times with this van, I stopped doing that and I leave the bed made up. The additional parts to turn that into a dining room table, I don't even take with me anymore. They are in storage. By the same token, that thing has a cute little table that can be used in the front. You spin both the seats around and you have the other two seats there. And in theory, four people can use this little dining room leaf table that folds out. It's all in storage because it didn't take me but a couple of days to realize that that didn't work for me. I don't want to give up the space to the parts it took, and I don't want to constantly be taking this thing apart, putting it together. It was hard to get by and navigate past it when it was up. You know, I'm not entertaining eight people in my van, so I don't need, need these things. But looking at it in the beginning and playing with it, it's like, oh, this is awesome. Well, it just didn't work out again in the real world, or at least my real world, my vision of what I wanted to be doing on the road. I'm sure there's people that love those features and more power to them. It's, it's great if it works for them. It just didn't work for me. And that's what I'm trying to do with any of this stuff is adapt it to work for me. If I see something different and say, hey, that's a good idea, I may try it, I may move it around, I may build whatever it is if I have to. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, so be it. I'm not going to stress over it anymore. Take it back out, throw it away, give it away, whatever. Find another way to do whatever it is. Because, and I know a lot of people are all caught up into this living in a van thing, but even if the time comes that I go full time, that thing is not going to be my house. Does that, does that make any sense at all? It is, but it isn't. You know, it's, it's a vehicle to get me where I want to go to see things and experience things out in the world. I am not trying to, it's a place to sleep cheap. It's a place to be my home base on wheels when I'm a thousand or 2000 miles away from home. And should the time come that I give this home up and do this for however long full time, it's still not going to be, I'm just not going to be that caught up, that involved in it. 
because I want my time on the road to be spent out doing things. When I have to be in the van, I want to be comfortable and I want to be functional. But for me, it is about being out there, experiencing things out there, meeting people out there. Again, my attitude may not be your attitude, and if there's a difference in our attitudes, that's fine. You don't have to agree with everything I say or every opinion I have about van life, and you shouldn't agree necessarily with anyone else that you see on the internet either, because you've got to figure out what works best for you. And if what you try doesn't work, you change it. It's that simple. So let me know what you think down below. Am I right? Am I wrong? What, what has your experience been? Those of you that have already done some of this, did you get everything right the first time or did you make some mistakes and have to go back and, and change things a little bit or adapt things to make them work better for you? Because if you've heard me say before with van life, everything is a trade-off. You only have so much space, you only have so much you can do, and generally making one change or deciding that, hey, I want this thing with me involves getting rid of something else in order to have the space to be able to do it. But let's all share some ideals. There'll be some more van travel stuff coming up. There'll be another video soon on some more interesting places I guarantee some really obscure things that you probably haven't thought of, and I certainly didn't think of in the beginning, that where you can sleep in your van. Different, different things coming up I hope you'll find interesting. Have a big change coming that I, I think you'll appreciate for this channel and will help everyone out even more trying to do their van life, nomadic adventures, whether it's a minivan, cargo van, whatever you're using. And we'll talk soon.